Welcome back tech friends, my name's Gareth, this is Tech Check. Today, we're catering for the masses with another PC build. This time round, we've got a budget of 600 pounds and it's all about 1080p gaming. So maybe your son, your daughter, or even yourself are looking to get into gaming, this could be right up your street. So stick with me, I'll walk you through exactly how to build it. All the parts we link down below in the description and if you have any questions, I answer every single one. If you like, smash that like button consider subscribing let's do this so on to the build we've gone with our motherboard b550 mk ud from gigabyte absolutely fantastic little motherboard guys this was about 65 pounds something like that again i'll leave links down in the description main reason was it does have dual pci uh, nvme slots gen 4 and gen 3 and it also has gen 4 for the graphics cards as well First thing we want to do is we want to take out our motherboard out of the anti-static packaging, place it in the safest place, which is this box. Once we're in the box, guys, if you are using any external SSDs, make sure to get your SATA data cables out. And the other thing to mention is we will need our IO shield because this one, unfortunately, doesn't come integrated. Let's move on to the CPU installation. So there's a good reason why I went for the Ryzen 5 5600 and not the 5500. First point was I managed to pick up this 5600 for 10 pounds more here in the UK than I did for the 5500 in the last build. And the 5500 doesn't support PCIe Gen 4, whereas the 5600 does. One thing to note, if you are looking to save 15, 20 pounds, the Ryzen 5 5600 does come with one of these standard coolers and this would be absolutely fine guys for cooling this particular CPU. We just wanted a bit more added RGB. So we'll take our 5600. Remembering guys that the actual pins are on 5000 are still on the actual CPU itself. So be very careful, keep your fingers off of the IHS. We want to open up our retention arm and you'll see here that we have a triangle located in this very bottom corner down here. What we're looking to do is match that with the triangle that's on the actual board. We just need to lower it down, drop it into place and then return our retention arm and our CPU is now installed onto the NVMe. Our storage option is from Crucial. It's their PCIe Gen 3 P3 absolutely fantastic uh, Gen 3 NVMe guys around three and a half thousand megabytes a second um, Not a problem at all with these had them used them really really reliable and Very adequately priced as well. I think this one was around 46 to 50 pounds So we are going to install it on our top drive even though this is a Gen 3. This is a Gen 4 slot We just need to pull up and take out our plastic tab place this at a 20 degree angle, slide it in, and then we can rest that down and then we can return our plastic tab, locking it into position. And that is all we need to do. The only thing I would say guys is, especially if you were using a Gen 4 drive, there's no heat sinks on this particular um, motherboard. So just keep an eye on those particular temperatures. It's always nicer to have a bit of a heat shield I don't think I've got one to hand, but you can actually buy ones that have a little bit of thermal pad on the back and you can actually stick on just to help dissipate a little bit of heat. But Gen 3 is not too bad, but Gen 4s and Gen 5 ones are really, really hot. So just be mindful of that. Onto our Corsair RAM, 3600 megahertz and 28 gig sticks, so 16 gigs in total. Again, LPX, low profile RAM. We're not gonna encounter any issues with regards to this. We've got two DIMMs of RAM, which means that we need to open slots A2 and B2. You'll notice here, some are black and some are gray. We want the actual gray ones. All we need to do is line up our little slot, which is here, with this particular slot here. We just got to make sure that you slot one side in and then the other. Now you'll see that this is incorrect. It's actually wrong. It doesn't actually line up. I'll see if I can give you a quick shot here. So what we need to do is turn it around, slide it back into place. And now you'll see if I put enough pressure on here, that will go nicely in place. All we've got to do is do exactly the same 
with slots A2. Ideally, even pressure either side until you hear the two clicks, just like that. And within the space of a couple of minutes, guys, we've got our 5600 CPU installed, we've got our Gen 3 NVMe installed, and we've got our 16 gigs worth of RAM. Let's get Moonboard installed into the case. Don't forget your IO shield, we'll need that in a minute. We'll bring up the CIT Phantom. Not used this case before, guys. Very adequately priced online. I think this was around £55 as well. Comes with six RGB fans and a hub included, but we'll come on to that in a minute. That's not too bad at all, guys. So the reason why I went for this is because we had a very tight budget. We needed lots of RGB because this is for someone's birthday present. So they wanted it to look nice and play your typical Fortnite, uh, Rocket League, Roblox, and all the other good stuff that eight, nine, 10 year olds play. So we needed it to perform nice, but especially wanted it to look blinged out with lots of RGB as well. So this particular case ticked all the boxes. Around about 55, 60 pounds, might have been a little bit cheaper links down below we've got a mesh vented panel at the front we've also got six included argb fans houses all your particular uh, motherboards from uh, mitx all the way up to eatx as well we've got a glass panel on the side we've got a psu shroud gives a little bit of we'll see the cv60 sign on the bottom but you're going to get your normal stuff guys We've got a couple of filters on the bottom and on the top. Um, all in all, it's a very sound little case for around 55 quid, so not much to moan about. So I'll actually, once I've built in it, tell you my full opinion at the end. That being said, let's get the motherboard installed. So four screws and we can remove this glass panel. We'll turn this over and you'll see at the back, we need to undo these two thumb screws. Oh, they do seem to be captive as well. So at the back, you'll see we've got this included fan and RGB hub. We've got our six five volt headers, which are here. And then we've got our six PWMs all hooked up. Less things for us to do. Absolutely perfect. As long as everything's done correctly. So before we go ahead and install our motherboard, if it doesn't come with an integrated IO shield, that's the time to get that installed now. So all we've got to do is push it in. If you've got any fan cables, be careful of those. Push it in from the back. You want some pressure at the bottom and then pressure at the top and you should hear it click in place. Perfect. We can take our motherboard nice and gently. Again, move any cables that you might have in the way. Don't drag them across those standoffs. Just be ultra careful. And all we're looking to do is to make that fit into that IO shield. So next up is we want these screws here, guys, and the ones which have got a nice head on, they're gonna make really good contact with the grounding pins. Comes in really handy if you've got a magnetic screwdriver. All we've got to do is populate all nine of the screws holding our motherboard in place. Don't over tighten these screws. That's the worst thing you can do, guys, because you might crack one of the, the PCB or actually break the motherboard by being too forceful. So as long as it's helm firmly in place, you'll be absolutely fine. There we go. Right, so as you can see there guys, we've got all nine of our screws, well, eight actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of our screws nicely installed. Let's move on to getting the cooler installed. So our cooler of choice guys is this Arctic Freezer 36 ARGB Black. Really, really nice cooler, guys. Gonna give us a little bit more RGB. It's got some MX6 included in the purchase as well and comes with a six year warranty. Fantastic for this particular CPU. Anything like a 12400, a 12600, a 5600, 5700. Something that's not gonna actually cost an arm and a leg. Gonna look good and perform great. Arctic, got a really good track record in cooling CPUs. So we'll open this up. Let's have a look inside. I've not used this one before. Oh, look at this, a bit beefy. Won't let me in. Right, look at that. 
We have our four copper heat pipes at the bottom with our warning label. Please remove before using. We also have one of our RGB fans and these are 120 mil fans as well. And we get two of these. And then we have a little bit of MX6, which is in here. And we've got a couple of things to kind of tidy it up as well as our brackets and our mounting hardware. It also comes with a contact bracket in here as well. That's absolutely fantastic. A nice little touch from Arctic because that now means that there's no excuses for anybody having overheating CPUs. This deals with LGA 1151, 1200, 2100, all the way up to 1700 and AM3, 4 and 5 as well. Nice little touch that. Really good bargain guys. £19.99, RGB, dual fan, all black, can't go wrong. So installation of this CPU tower cooler guys couldn't be easier. So all we've got to do is we've got to remove our standard AM4 brackets which are here just remove the two screws you want to keep hold of these those guys because if you're going to change your cooler or sell your motherboard or anything like that it's a good idea to keep hold of them so remove them four screws then we can remove our two black things which are there once you've removed those four screws we want to take the four gray plastic circles and we want to place them on each corner. Next up is replacing our mounting hardware so we can place those. We want to make sure that they are facing inwards. What we want to do then is take the four screws, the longer ones, and just put one screw in either end. Not too tight, and then we'll do the exact same for this side. Next up, we can take our MX6, which had nicely been included, and put a nice little X pattern in the middle here. It'll find its own way, not a problem. If you wanna just do a little dollop, then you can. We can then remove our warning label. We want to make sure that we have it the correct way round. And all we've got to do guys is these two screws are going to get screwed into our mounting bracket. We're gonna do a few turns on one side and then a few turns on the other. And we're just gonna keep doing that until we've got a nice tight pressure. For our fan installation, we just need to make sure that we've got our fan orientated the correct way. So air's gonna be coming from this side and out of this side. We just need to line up our screw heads with the side of the actual fin stack and push them on. I absolutely love that. Absolutely love it. That's brilliant. Never seen that before. Amazing. For our second fan, we're just going to place our little sticker over the back of this little bit of mess, if I can get it on nicely. I'm sure there'll be somebody saying, yeah, that's not in the middle. But all we need to make sure is we're helping our first fan. We want air to be pulled through the actual radiator, exhaust through the back of the cage. We want the cables coming out of the back. We line it up and simply push that into position, making sure that all four are clicked on. To ensure that both of our fans are actually being powered, we can daisy chain them both together by utilizing this particular clip. We can hide the rest of this, and what we need to do is we need to attach our CPU connector to our CPU header, which is down here. And we'll work on hiding all the cables after. From an RGB perspective, what we want to make sure of is that, again, we can tidy these up a little bit later on, but all we need to do is connect those both together and then connect this to a five volt addressable header on our motherboard. Now this particular motherboard doesn't have one and that's the reason why I got this case because we can actually connect it to the included ARGB connector or shall we say the controller at the back of the case. We're just gonna daisy chain that in just like that. We can do a slight little peel and there we have it guys. 
really, really easy, straightforward, and a very cheap uh, kind of solution here. And one thing I really love is getting rid of them cable clips and actually very, very easy for any first time builder as well. So let's just take a look at the back of the case, guys. In terms of cables, we have our JFP one out, our front IO, we've got our USB three, we've also got our HD audio, and then we've got our USB two. That's not a problem. In terms of our RGB controller, we have also got here a five volt three pin connection to go to our motherboard and a four pin PWM connector so we can control all the fan speeds. And if your motherboard's got a five volt addressable header, then you can control all the RGB. If not, what you can do and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my reset switch, which is here, make it as neat as possible. There we go. And what we are gonna do is we are going to connect that onto our controller and then very nicely we can actually press our LED button which is up here and all the RGB can be controlled without any software which will be ideal for an 8, 9, 10 year old. We'll go ahead and push all of our cables through to the relevant places. Up next is our CV650 from Corsair. This is a 650 watt power supply, 80 plus bronze rated. It's going to get the job done guys, comes from a reputable company and in all honesty it's got all the cables that we're going to need. The only downside is it's non-modular. We may find it a little bit more difficult to actually cable manage it and get rid of all the cables uh, but other than that, fantastic pickup. First time builders sometimes work out better not having a modular one uh, therefore you've not got no worries of which cables go into what, what sides fit in where etc. You've only got to worry about one end of the cables. Comes with our UK plug located in the UK. Let's get it installed. Most important thing when installing this, we want to make sure the fan is to the bottom. Just slide it into place, push it to the back. We can then take the four included screws and screw those in. I would highly suggest don't screw them all the way in until you've got at least three of them in and then that way you won't find it difficult to find all of the holes. So at this point you're probably thinking, oh my God, what am I gonna do with all them cables? Dead, dead straightforward guys. All we're gonna do is separate them out and this is the point where we want to make sure that the cables are not all here, there and everywhere. So you should have three main cables, especially on this power supply. We have cables called PCIe, and they are six plus two cables. So these are for our graphics cards. We want an eight pin, which is for our CPU. And that one's going to go all the way up there. It's gonna go through the top. It's always through the top right hand side. And we can cable tidy that all the way down there. We want our 24 pin, which is going to go up here and through there. Our graphics card one, we're gonna leave that one a little bit till later, but what we have got in this case is a requirement for SATA because we need to power our actual hub. Now it's like a little L slot. All you need to make sure is that you've got that orientated the correct way and then push it on nice and gently. There we go. And the rest of these cables, with the exception of our PCIe, can go all in the back. So on to the best bit, which is all the connections. And most people say, I don't have a clue where to put these. Again, I'll walk you through it, guys. I can only get so close with regards to the cameras and stuff, but I'll walk you through it as best, uh, as, best as I can. So ultimately, we always start off with our biggest cable, and that is our 24 pin. You have a little plug on this side. You just want to make sure that that's bend around, put into our connector and make firm connection. You should hear a click like that. Next up is our USB 3 and as you can see here we have a little nog on the top here and there's a little opening up here. We just need to guide this gently into place and push forward. There we go. Next up is our USB 2 and you'll see that there is a blank in this top left hand corner. So all we need to do is match that up with the blank that's on our USB 2 connection. And all of the connections, guys, do have 
a full description at the bottom of them as well. Last up on the bottom here is our HD audio. Again, it's got a blank on the top row. We just need to put that, which is down here on the bottom. So we orientate it the correct way, turn it round and then feed it into position. And we can pass all of the excess cables back through to the back once we're finished. Now the most trickiest of all of the cables are these ones here, which are our HDD light, our power LED positive and negative, and our power switch. So there is no easy way to kind of show this unless I got a really tight up close angle. The easiest explanation is take your motherboard name and model, go onto Google and find out obviously your motherboard site, type in JFP1 layout, look in your manual, loads of different ways to do it guys. They're all the same. Okay, 99% of them are exactly the same. You don't need to get too caught up on it. All you're looking for is this kind of color here, this white one down here. We're looking for the left hand side. So all of these on the right, you're not interested in there for speakers and all that good stuff. All we're looking for is literally these top four on the right and the bottom four on the left. So. We'll start with the easiest one, which is our power switch. At the back, it has a triangle, which indicates the positive. So we're gonna to go top row, and we're going fourth pin from the left. So it's gonna take two pins, and we're pushing it on. We're then going to go for our hard drive. Again, at the back, it indicates a positive, and all we need to do is push that on the bottom two, on the left-hand side, and then that leaves us with our positive LED, positive and negative. We want the positive on the right and the negative on the left. And I like to do both of these together, guys, because I just find it's a lot easier to do it together. And all we're going to do is make sure that they are orientated the correct way, like so, and then push them both on next to the power switch right at the top. And again, we can push the excess through to the back. That leaves us with one cable, which is this one down here, which is our EPS uh, power cable, and that provides power to our CPU. So as you can see here, we've got a clip, which is just here. Now we haven't got loads of room, okay? So if you wanted to, if you're watching this before you're actually building, I'd highly suggest if you're using all of the same parts, you could go ahead, open up your power supply and install this cable before you install your CPU cooler. Or you can feel adventurous, or if you've got small ends, you'll be absolutely fine. This is the moment where you go, woosah, woosah, patience, because you will get it in, it just, the cables are a little stiff. Woo, that didn't take long. Come on, there we go nicely in and all we've got to do is again feed this back through to the back so that we can hide all the mess on to the most important part of any gaming pc and this time around guys i wanted to try and get the absolute best bang for bulk as i could and everything that you see here is all brand new with the exception of our graphics card this is brand new second hand um so i wanted to try and get something as good as i could to keep it as relevant as possible and to give us the best frame rates and all the good stuff like DLSS and so on and so forth. So the last builds that I've done a 5500 and an RX 6600, I've done a 3600 and a 1660 and this time around I've stretched the budget and we've gone for 600 quid and I've managed to pick this up for 200 pounds. So get yourself on Facebook Marketplace, eBay and so on and so forth do your due diligence, make sure that you're doing it safely, and hopefully you'll find some bargains. But this 3060 Ti paired with that 5600 is going to be absolutely fantastic. This is virtually brand spanking new. Big shout out to the guy that I bought it off. 25 minutes away, I actually travelled to come and pick this up. He was still playing Modern Warfare when I turned up. A little bit surprised that I'd actually turned up, I think. But thank you very much. Pleasure and nice to meet you. Um, let's get this installed. I always like to line up my PCIe slot and graphics card. And we know that it's the top two slots that we need to remove. So we can go ahead and undo our little cage on the side. 
that will then allow us to move or remove this little bracket here. This particular case, you've only got one PCIe Express slot here that can actually be took out and not bend and uh, not replaced. So there you go, we actually want the top two. So I need to make sure that when we're bending these out, we'd be careful of the traces on our motherboard. Just be ultra careful here. There we go. That should break off. And then the top one can simply just be undone. We want to lower it in into place, lining it up nice and gently. Once you've found the hole, you can give it a firm push until you hear a click. There we go. What we can do then is we can lock it down into place with one of the screws. We'll do our second screw. We can proceed to put our little cage on the side back in place. And last thing to do is to connect to our eight pin or our six plus two pin for our power to our graphics card. So just pinch these cables together. They should sit on top of each other quite nicely. And we're just gonna bend that around, pop it into place, and again, lock it down. Now we have got this ugly pigtail here. And what I will do is work a little bit of magic. We'll get a couple of zip ties down. We'll feed the cables through. We just want to make sure we don't put any undue pressure on here, but tidy it up. And I'll be back very shortly where we'll do a test boot. Let's go. Hopefully guys, we'll go through to the BIOS. Oh, in fact, we might go through to the Windows installation media because I've got that plugged in. But that is a very, very, very good start there. So, whew, thank God that's all good. And as it rightly says here, guys, to give you an indication, I'll give you a little bit of B-roll as well, but our LED light will give us our LEDs all changing and all synced up and stuff like that, which is absolutely fantastic. So we can cycle through all those, choose whichever one that you want. Now, ultimately, the really, really positive thing here, guys, is 1080p, 600 quid is going to be absolutely fantastic. All the parts listed down below in the description, really, really solid, solid build. And three, four years ago, this would have been a real mid-tier system. Again, 3060 Ti, 5600 for the CPU, 16 gigs worth of RAM, 650 watt power supply, one terabyte Gen 3 NVMe on this B550 platform. So really, really nice, solid system, guys. And there we go, we've gone through to the Windows installation media, ready for me to get all the chipset, the drivers, and everything all updated. And hopefully, whoever this is going to has a really, really nice birthday. I'm hoping that you've enjoyed the video, guys. If you have, smash that like button. Consider subscribing because 95% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed still, which is a little disappointing. So show some love. Um, other than that, I hope you have a great weekend. All the very best. Take it easy.